Good morning, everyone. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. And for this edition of Trade Talks, we're going to dive deeper into MIFID and the impact it's going to have on research and the operational side of the buy and sell side businesses. Um, Tom Caligna, I just mispronounced your last name. I apologize. And you would think with my last name, I would be good at this. Caniglia. Thank you very much. <laughs> He's the Managing Director for Brokerage and Research Services over IHS Market. And I'm surprised this actually isn't a bigger conversation in financial media because it's going to have an impact on U.S. brokerage business. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, when we go in and speak with asset managers and sell-side firms, which we do quite often at IHS Market, this is really all they want to talk about. This is one of the biggest regulatory changes uh, from a business model and compliance perspective that they'll face, uh, that they've faced in probably a decade. So it has its challenges, both from a compliance and administrative standpoint, but also just from a business model and future uh, business model perspective for all the participants. Well, if it's being rolled out in Europe in January 3rd, how come U.S. managers have to be so concerned? So it's not just a um, legal compliance matter, it's more of a competitive one as well. So uh, many global asset managers who are located in the U.S. are finding it challenging to operate their business in different silos. So they tend to have historically adopted their compliance practices to whatever they deem to be the most stringent regulation. And certainly MIFID II coming out meets that criteria. So they're having to meet uh, these MIFID regs, not only from a regulatory perspective, but also from a, just a best practices perspective. And then if you look at a non-global manager based in the U.S., they're also potentially competing for European mandates, and therefore they're competing against European advisors who are ready to adopt MIFID regs, and potentially would be at a uh, disservice to their customers or a disadvantage for competing uh, for those mandates if they don't follow MIFID. Right. So that's why a lot of asset managers here in the U.S. are very concerned as well. Right, because European managers, when they're doing their due diligence, they're not going to have to wor worry about what the sell side has in terms of MIFID compliance in place. Right, and, and not only when they're doing due diligence, but when you know the regulators come knocking, they're going to make they need to make sure that they're following the rules, and uh, a lot of underlying clients are seeing the benefits, or see or, or expect benefits from these MIFID regs, so they're pressuring asset managers to follow these regs as well. So, what do you think the consolidated financial research space is going to look like? How's it going to be impacted? So, there's uh, potential a lot of changes already coming. We're starting to see uh, major asset managers cut their brokerage list and their research list significantly as they're faced with um, increased challenges around uh, sourcing uh, content and managing uh, the consumption of that content at a very granular level. So, they, they see already the impact it's going to have on them uh, from a business model perspective, and they're starting to cut those lists. Uh, so, that's primarily. Um, what we see initially. And then longer term, uh, the sell side is under pressure also um, in an environment where asset managers are cutting back their lists. Uh, the sell side is trying to position themselves to get as much share of wallet as they can. So I've used this term barbell effect to basically indicate that for the largest uh, sell side firms who have a um, broad array of services across research, research services, and execution, their business model would probably be impacted the least. And also on the other end of the barbell, firms that are independent in nature, that have very specialized research that add a lot of value, you could see them flourishing as well. It's really the firms in the middle that are okay at execution, okay at research, maybe have had a trading desk to facilitate paying for research, but weren't really effective in offering a broad array of execution services. It's those firms in the middle on the sell side that uh, will have some challenges um, in this new right. post-MIFID environment. Well, it's just like the classic sell side chicken before the egg argument, right? Okay. How can you get execution services if you can't tease them with research and vice versa? So I think that's really going to be a challenge, but yep. it's not just the sell side that's going to have challenges. Asset managers are going to face some challenges as well. Yes, as, as we all know, the asset management, the active asset management industry has been under tremendous pressure with the onslaught of other passive products. So these regulations put a lot of pressure on the active managers who are consuming research. Um, and ultimately uh, their cost of, of kind of, um, of entry in the business has just gone up. And uh, the, the buy side is, is, is really going to be challenged with how, how do they, in this new world, how do they adapt their business models to make sure that they can remain profitable, not only um, given the pressure on, on them, but also how do they uh, source research 
in an environment where research uh, will probably be less available. So therefore, many asset managers are looking to maybe in-source research capabilities even more than they have in the past, which means hiring more analysts and looking a lot more like the sell side has, has historically done. And when you think about the kinds of firms that are in a position to do that, it tends to be the larger asset managers who can afford to insource more of their own capability. Again, that puts pressure on the smaller advisor who may not be in that same position. All right, well, let's talk about some solutions for the industry. Yeah. There has to be some out there. Yeah, there are a few. I think from an administrative perspective, everyone's just scrambling to try to figure out how do, I meet, how do I meet these rules, how do I do so in a way that is auditable, trackable, that when the regulators come knocking, they can demonstrate that they followed not only the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. And certainly at IHS Market, we have a whole plethora of services that we're offering to customers, both across uh, research consumption, evaluation, and payment, uh, best execution, and transaction and trade reporting. So there are a lot of new entrants into um, this sphere, given, given the regulatory changes. Um, but it's, it's more, I think, also, um, you know, not just, you know, how vendors can, can help uh, asset managers meet these needs. It's what are the asset managers themselves going to do in, in, a, in an environment where their costs are going up? It's going to be more challenging for them to find the research that they need. And not all, all asset managers are in a position to, to hire in. So I think there's going to be more innovation, I'm sure, that will come as a result of these very heavy-handed regulation. And within that Within technology and innovation, I think it'll make research potentially more available and new entrants uh, easier to access uh, by side to provide the, their services. So we're expecting a bit of a technological revolution around these regulations, um, in addition to the new entrants that have already come in to just help on the admin and technology side of the, of the so business. So this all takes place on January 3rd. Of course, there's going to be some hiccups along the way, as there is with any type of massive regulatory change. Yeah. What do you think the environment looks like in 6 to 12 months in a little bit longer term? So, yeah, there, there, there probably will be uh, some hiccups, but I think the regulators are understanding that this is a massive shift for the industry, and I think it's more of the intent that they'll be looking for. So if they come in and, and look at your processes, and they're not absolutely perfect, but you're on the right path, you've actually done something about the regulations, you're following the spirit of the regulations. Uh, I don't want to speak for the regulators, but in circles, I get the sense that on that first pass, I think they'll give people a bit of a, um, a some leeway based on um, their intent and not just following the regs specifically. But when you look at it from a business model perspective, you know, you can really see that there'll be massive consolidation uh, across the industry. We've already seen some serious uh, buy side consolidation uh, within, you know, European and, and U.S. firms merging. Um, so I think you'll see more of that as they try to increase their assets under management to give them more scale so that they can afford to do the things they may need to do, like insourcing research and building a much more administrative process for managing their consumption and payment for research. So you'll see consolidation for sure. And then, I, as I said earlier, I think there'll be um, an opportunity for innovation on the technology, you, you, leveraging technology for uh, research providers who um, may be working at a sell-side firm today who decide, you know what, maybe this is the time for me to strike out on my own and set up my own shop where I'm going to be very specialized in, in a specific uh, set of research that I'm, that I'm confident in. So I think those are just a couple of changes. I'm sure there'll be a lot more. All right. Well, thank you very much, Tom, for joining me at MarketSite. And everyone, thank you for joining me as always. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.